walk through a medieval church roof, examine the beams of a centuries-old bridge, or study the timbers pulled from a Viking ship burial, and, well, one question becomes unavoidable. Why is that wood still sound after hundreds of years, while modern timber can fail in just a few decades? The answer is not superior luck, mythical craftsmanship, or, you know, forgotten magic. Medieval builders understood wood in ways modern construction has largely abandoned. They did not rely on products to protect wood. They relied on systems. Once those systems are understood, the reasons modern wood fails become, frankly, uncomfortably clear. The uncomfortable opening truth about rot that medieval builders already knew. Wood does not rot because it gets wet. Medieval engineers understood that rot requires long-term moisture combined with oxygen and biological access. Remove any one of those elements and decay slows dramatically, or, in fact, stops. Modern construction focuses almost entirely on blocking water at the surface. Medieval construction focused on preventing moisture from lingering inside the wood. This difference in philosophy explains nearly everything that follows. Medieval wood began its life with advantages modern lumber rarely has. Medieval builders selected trees, not lumber. They favoured slow-grown oak, pine, larch and chestnut from harsh environments where tight growth rings created dense fibres. These trees contained high levels of resin or tannin, both of which naturally resist fungal growth. Sapwood, rich in sugars, was often removed entirely. Trees were typically felled in winter when sap levels were lowest. This reduced internal nutrients that fungi depend on. Logs were then seasoned slowly, sometimes for years, under cover with airflow, but shielded from rain. By the time construction began, the wood was already hostile to decay. Modern builders can apply this principle immediately by prioritizing hardwood, slow-grown lumber, and proper seasoning over speed. So, heat was used to change wood internally, not just for cosmetic purposes. Medieval builders, you see, frequently exposed timber to controlled heat. Beams were dried near hearths, and planks were warmed before shaping. Sometimes, posts were even lightly charred before installation. This process, well, it drove off residual moisture, reduced sugars, and mobilized resins within the wood. When the heated wood cooled, resins would harden inside those tiny capillaries that normally transport water. This, in turn, reduced future moisture absorption without actually sealing the surface. You know, modern builders who rely solely on kiln drying miss this step entirely. A modern adaptation involves, hmm, controlled flame treatment or radiant heating followed by slow cooling, especially for exterior wood. Natural oils, interestingly enough, penetrated wood instead of forming those brittle skins. Rather than painting wood, medieval builders would saturate it. Animal fats, fish oils, and plant oils were applied to warm timber, so they penetrated deeply. These oils oxidize slowly inside the fibers, creating internal water resistance while still preserving flexibility. This method did not trap moisture. It allowed wood to breathe while blocking capillary movement. You know, modern sealants fail when they crack or peel, trapping moisture beneath intact layers. A modern equivalent uses heated linseed oil or fish oil applied in stages over several days, allowing full absorption before the next application. 
Minerals altered wood chemistry in ways decay organisms could not tolerate. Ash, lime, and salt were used widely. Wood was washed with ash water or lime solutions, raising alkalinity and discouraging fungal growth. Ship timbers soaked in seawater absorbed salt deep into their fibres, where it remained after drying. These mineral treatments worked because they complemented drying, heating, and oiling. On their own, they were insufficient. Modern builders can replicate this by using mild alkaline washes or saltwater exposure followed by thorough drying and oil treatment. Design prevented rot long after construction was complete. Medieval buildings were designed to shed water aggressively. Roofs were steep. Overhangs were generous. Timber joints drained instead of trapping moisture. Structural wood rarely touched soil directly, resting instead on stone plinths or elevated supports. Ventilation was, you know, constant. Floors breathed from below and walls allowed airflow. This ensured wood dried quickly after rain. Modern construction quite often does the opposite, sealing buildings tightly and trapping moisture where it causes the most damage. Why does modern wood fail even with all these advanced products, you might wonder? Well, modern construction relies on fast-grown lumber that's just packed with sugars, installed while it's still wet, sealed up tight with impermeable coatings, and then, to top it off, placed in designs that actually trap moisture. When those coatings, you know, inevitably fail, decay just races ahead, completely out of sight. Maintenance, instead of being preventative, suddenly becomes reactive. Back in medieval times, systems failed slowly and crucially, quite visibly. Components could actually be repaired rather than simply replaced. Longevity was engineered, not just assumed. So how do we uh, apply these medieval principles today without giving up all our modern tools? Anyone, whether you're building sheds, cabins, fences, or maybe restoring historic structures, can start using these principles right away. Choose dense, slow-grown wood. Allow for proper seasoning. Use heat to mobilize the natural resins. Saturate the fibers with penetrating oils instead of just slapping on surface coatings. Alter the wood's chemistry with minerals when it makes sense. And you know, always design structures that shed water and encourage airflow. None of these steps, honestly, require abandoning your modern tools. What they do require is letting go of the idea that some product can replace true understanding. That's really the reason medieval wood survived, while ours, well, so often struggles. Medieval builders respected wood as a dynamic material, something that interacts with its environment. Modern construction, by contrast, tends to treat it as if it's inert and disposable. And the difference, frankly, is measured not in decades, but in centuries. If this guide has helped you even a little to see why historical construction still outperforms much of what we build today, then, you know, do consider subscribing to The Beginning for more deep, evidence-based explorations of forgotten engineering knowledge. And please share this with fellow history enthusiasts, builders and survivalists, anyone who values systems that have been proven by time rather than just promises printed on a label.